Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Excel Weekend. Uh, my name is Steve Cranach. I'm a director at Sun Product, and I'm happy to come here and talk to you uh, just a little bit about Sun Product. Uh, we are a team of experts in a variety of different specialties, and we offer um, Excel consulting and training. We also offer Power BI consulting and training as well as Power Automate uh, consulting. So uh, please contact us if you need any help with that. And I'm happy to be here today talking to you about a better way to create many dependent data, va data validation dropdowns. So first of all, we'll give you an overview of what we'll talk about. Um, this is going to show you how to create a bunch of data validation dropdowns uh, so that it makes data entry easier. It's a practical application that I'll be showing you. Uh, but the concepts that we're going to learn here are just basics about data validation dropdowns how to make them dependent on others. Uh, then we're going to look at some uh, dynamic array functions. So we'll look at unique sort and filter. We'll talk about array references, um, spilling, referring to uh, data that's spilled in multiple cells. And then uh, a real special thing about this scenario is automation using the cell function. So hopefully that's a new thing that you can learn. Uh, we'll talk about conditional formatting using relative references to make our, our rules a little bit easier. And then as a little bonus, we'll talk about uh, some automation with VBA events. So first, to set the stage a little bit. Uh, we have a client where they came to us with this scenario that they have a sales quote, and they found it very cumbersome for their sales associates to fill out the, the quote for their customers. Uh, the process that they would do is they would look on a bunch of different product lists that they had in a variety of other spreadsheets, and then finding the product they wanted, they would copy the information and paste it onto their sales quote, including things like the category, the product name, a color, a size, things like that, and then put the prices in there. And they found it extremely time consuming. You can imagine manually searching through different lists to find everything and then copying and pasting. And then it's easy to make mistakes, again, because you're cutting and pasting. Uh, and then it can also bring things over in a sloppy format. Their, their product lists were not all in a consistent format. So if they pasted uh, and included formatting, it would lead to problems like you can see in the example here where we have just a not very nice looking sales quote. You wouldn't necessarily want to turn that over to a customer. So they asked us for help. And what they wanted was to make all of these fields to be drop downs to make it easy. So their sales associate they didn't have to look across all their product lists. They would just automatically be able to uh, click a drop down, pick the right product, and then the, um, the pricing would just fill in for them automatically. And so we have a challenge here, and that's how do we do this uh, and avoid doing a lot of repetition for setting up dependent drop downs on each of these cells? And you'll see why as we go through. But basically, they want to be able to pick a category for their products. And then within the category, pick a product. And then within that product, choose available colors and available sizes. So let's start off with some basics about data validation dropdown lists. Um, you've probably seen this before. Just bring up my pointer here. So the, the quick and basic way to make a dropdown list is to uh, pick a cell and then go to the data validation item on the data tab. Then you go to the validation criteria in the dialog box and choose list. And then you just choose a source range. And you can see in this case, I've chosen the range of C1 to C6, which contains a bunch of different kinds of fruit. And I could have uh, just as easily just typed in the values here in my source field and then click OK. And then voila, I have a drop down list. And you can see here what the drop down list now it's just in cell a1 and it lets me pick from any one of those fruits that i have in the range of c1 to c6 very easy and and uh, very useful but there can be some problems so you may have a really long list and it's not so easy to go through the list so you can see here in my example the scroll bar uh, looks like there are probably hundreds of items in my list so i would have to do a lot of scrolling around to find it and there, there are a couple approaches to handling that. One is that we can take advantage of a recent improvement in Excel, and that is autocomplete. So now uh, you can just start typing, and the list will get shortened, and then you can pick from the shortened list. 
So in this case, I'm showing typing C-A-N, and then it shortens my list to only items that be, where there's a word beginning with C-A-N, and that does make it a lot easier. However, if you have a really long list, and maybe you don't know what all the values are that you're looking for, uh, you can't really start typing, and you can imagine with a really long product list, that could be the case. Now I'm going to show a simpler example throughout here, but um, just keep that in mind. So another approach would be to uh, organize your source data so that you have it categorized. So in what I'm showing here, the example is um, the, there's a category that you choose first, so frozen food, and then you choose an item, and it's showing us available frozen food items. So I think that makes sense. So how do we set that up? So the first thing is that we need to organize our data. So here we have a table. It's very simple, just two columns. Uh, the first one is the category and then the item. So every item has a different category, but there are many fewer categories. So task one is to set up a drop-down list for the category, and that one's very simple. So here we're going to use the unique function, and we're just getting uh, the unique values from the category column of our products table. So it's as simple as that. You just type unique, supply the column name, and then we put sort around it just to put them in order, uh, just to make it a little bit more user-friendly. Again, the sort is very easy. You can just use the sort function and whatever uh, values show up in there will get sorted appropriately. All right, so now uh, we have the, the formula generating our list of unique categories, but we need to turn that into a dropdown. So to do that, again, we go to the cell where we want the dropdown to appear, and we go to the data validation and we choose list. And in this case, we're going to specify as the source uh, the, the address where we just created that formula, so F43. And what's really important here is to use the hash symbol at the end. And what that will do is not just get the value that's in F43, but it will get all the values that spill out of F43 as well. And as you can see here, it will be all the categories of foods that we have. Now, something optional that you can do to make it a little bit more readable is create a defined name that refers to F43. So for example, instead of typing in F43 here in the data validation, you may be, if you define a name, for example, called category list, then your source would say equals category list, um, which that would be referring to F43 as well. Just a little more readable. All right, so the categories was very simple, uh, but let's see how we can set it for the dependent list. So how do we get the list of items uh, once we've selected a category? Uh, this one's gonna be very similar, but we just had to have, I have to add one more step onto it. So here we can see in the screenshot, uh, the category has been selected and it's in F19. And then for our item list, we want to get just items that are in the category that was selected in F19. So now we're adding on the filter function. So within the um, products table that we have, there's again uh, two columns. There's the item column and there's the category column. So we're saying uh, filter just the product item column and give us items where the product category is what we have selected in F19. Okay. And then um, we also want to make that unique. So we use unique around that. And then we also want that sorted. So we use sort around that. It's, again, this is fairly simple. And you can see the formula here down at the bottom. And again, we need to create a data validation rule for that. So that was just our formula to get all the data. But now we need to go to the cell where we want the uh, dropdown to appear. Again, we choose data validation and choose list. And here we specify G43. And again, we use the hash symbol to make sure that we don't just get the value in G43, but we get all the values that spill from G43. And likewise, we could turn this into a named item. And rather than saying G43 hash, we would just uh, type the name into the data validation dialog and then press OK. And now here you can see the effect. So we have our category list, and then we have our item list, 
and you can see that as you choose say fruit then you can uh, go to the item and it will just show a list of items that are in the fruit category or baking whatever whatever you choose in the first column so um, that's pretty nice uh, in my describing how to set this up i was really talking about putting a drop down list in one cell uh, because we referred to that cell so we could um, make the next drop down so how would we do this if we want to make a whole list of cells all using dependent drop downs uh, you might think you can go in and set up a data validation you know a formula to get the values for every one of the uh, rows that you have in your table so that is a way to do it you can set up uh, separate data validation rules for each one of these and that will work but it can be very cumbersome if you have a lot of rows that you want to fill out and so if you have lots of uh, data evaluation, or sorry, a lot of drop downs that you want to use. So I want to talk about the cell function because this is key to the solution that we've come up with. So the cell function is very simple. Um, it basically, you just give it, you choose one of the types of info to get. So you can see on the screenshot here, you can get things like the cell address, the column, the color, the contents. Uh, the ones I want to focus on here, though, are the column and the row. So normally when you use the uh, cell function, you can give it a reference. So if I were to type in cell address and reference A1, that would always give me uh, the result would be $A, $1. Uh, and it's you know not too useful. However, if we omit the reference for the uh, cell, it will just tell us information about the active cell the last time that Excel was recalculated. So you can see in my example here, uh, I'm, I've typed in the words last edited to A5, and then I have some cell function, cell formulas above that. So you can see now in A1, my formula is just cell address, and it tells me $A, $5, and that's because that was the last cell that I edited. And every time I edit, Excel is going to recalculate. Uh, and then you can see uh, if I want to find out the, the row and column, I just use row and column in my cell, fun cell function, and I get those. So now I can see I'm in uh, row 5, column 1. And I'll, I'll get into why that's important once we go through the setup in a little bit. So how would we do uh, use the cell function to filter our list? So what's interesting about this is that now we can pick a category on any row, in our table so if we want drop downs in that entire table so we can fill out the whole thing uh, we don't need to build a separate data validation rule for each one of these cells we can just uh, set up one rule for the category and then we'll have one rule for the items so we already saw that the category is very simple and it, it's not dependent on anything else so that one's just the same but for the item now instead of um, referring to an actual specific cell that we've you know we want our items to show us values that are in the category that we've chosen uh, like you can see in the screenshot uh, i'm choosing a baking in cell uh, i21 but instead of saying i want my next drop down list to only show me items where the category equals i21 i want it to be flexible so here's where we use the uh, cell function so now I can say, show me the item that was in, show me the category on the last row that was edited. And I can do that using the cell function. Uh, we also use the indirect function because cell returns text and we actually want to get the value from that cell. So I want to get the value from cell I21. So I say, give me the, the address of the row and the column. In this case, I'm putting in the column of I18, that's always the category, and that will show me um, whatever row I'm on, it will give me the category from column I. Okay, and you can see that up in our screenshot, uh, cell J15 shows me the category from whatever uh, row that I entered. Okay. So now for my drop-down rule, or my, my formula that generates my list of items, 
I can just filter that list by the last category that was used. So here, instead of referring to one of the cells that's on my list of uh, items, in, or sorry, one of the cells in my category column in my table, I'm just going to have another cell that shows me the category that was last uh, chosen on, on the last active row. Okay. So here we do table uh, product category equals J15, and that will always give me the list of items for the category of the last chosen. Okay, now let's see the effect of that. So here you can see in our example, we have our table where we want to be able to select multiple categories and multiple items. So as we select a category on any row, you can see in the bottom of the sheet, the list that generates the items for our dropdown will update accordingly. So for it works for any row. And as I um, pick a cell on either the item or the category, it will show me the current category for that row. Uh, likewise, if I just delete a cell or delete a value, it will show me the category for that row. Um, you can also see if we try to uh, pick a, an item before we have a category chosen, it gives us a little warning and we'll show how we can do that in a little bit. Okay, so now let's see how we can make this a little bit more robust. So if you think about the original dependent dropdown list that we set up, uh, those were really not, uh, they weren't prone to error because the uh, dropdown list for the items was always referring directly to the cell where we picked a value for the category. Um, now when we're using the cell function to kind of, you know, find out what was the last active cell, uh, we know that that may not be in the table where we're picking uh, categories and items. So people could do things in different order and maybe that could cause a problem. So there's a few different ways that we can uh, help to make this a little bit more robust. Um, number one is that we're going to use um, the, the final uh, parameter of the filter function, which is if empty. So basically our filter function is used to find items in the category uh, that was last used, but if the last edited cell was not on a row with categories, then we're not going to get a, a result from that. And instead, that kind of tells us that the user hasn't picked a category. So maybe they just went to the item column first and they just haven't picked a category. And well, we can actually put that into our filter function. So if that's the case, the dropdown list will say pick a, get, pick a category first. Uh, so that's really, there's nothing to do with the data validation itself. This is strictly working on the formula that generates the values that will populate our list. So that one's pretty straightforward and, and pretty nice. It gives the user instructions on what they need to do. Uh, we can also use data validation. So it is possible that the user may put data in in an unexpected order. So maybe they uh, pick a category and then pick an item, but then they go back and change the category and all of a sudden uh, we have an invalid uh, setup there. So uh, you can use data validation to do that. Uh, we're actually using two things here. So on the side, there's a check selection column when you can see valid or invalid. And then based on the result of that, we'll also use data validation. And I'll show you how we set that up in detail. Okay, so First, we have a formula that's going to generate our what we call check selection to give us a valid, invalid, partial, or blank result. Now, if we focus in on the different parts of this formula, uh, the first thing we're going to do is check whether the category and the item are blank. So this is really simple using the isBlank function, and we specify the whole range for the category column and the whole range for the item column. And that's going to generate an array of zeros and ones for that range, uh, actually trues and falses. So um, we can add those together. And if we get a zero, then that will, sorry, if we get a two, that will mean both are blank. If only one of them is blank, it will result in one. And if both of them are not blank, it will be a zero. And then we'll see how to use that in a sec.
And here we can use the switch function to take the results of the is blank expression. So if it's a two, meaning um, both the item and the category are blank, it will just give us an empty value. And you can see in my check selection column there in L, the there are a bunch of blanks for the rows where we haven't selected a category and item yet. Uh, if they've selected, say, just the category but not the item, it will say partial, and that's fine. Uh, if they've selected both the category and an item, then it will actually check using the next step to see whether it's a valid selection or not. So the check is done by checking based on the values that they've entered, uh, do we find that combination in the uh, product table so we concatenate the category and item by using the uh, ampersand there. And we just check to make sure uh, that the value that they've entered is in that table. Um, if, it's, if it is, then the xmatch function will return um, a, a value for that. If it does not exist, uh, it will come back with an NA error. So we use the isNA function to detect that. And we wrap that inside if. So uh, if is going to return invalid if the X match gave us an NA. Uh, and then it's going to return valid if it did not give us NA. And then we can just see in our check selection column uh, valid or invalid. Okay. Uh, and then once we have those values, the conditional formatting is very easy. Uh, we can just highlight the invalid entries immediately. And the interesting thing here, or the important thing to note here, is how to make it simple for yourself. And we're going to do that by using a relative reference uh, for, the for the conditional formatting rule itself. So the first thing to do is select the entire range uh, that you want to apply conditional formatting to. So you can see in my table I've selected I-19 down through J-27. And then our rule is very simple, but it's important that you make sure that you're using the right uh, type of referencing. So the rule is looking to see if the word invalid shows up in column L for whatever row we're on. Uh, so therefore, in the rule, we need to lock column L, so we use $L, and then we just put in the row number of the first row in our range, which is 19, and that's a relative reference. So basically it says uh, for every cell, whatever row it's on, look over in column L, and if it sees the word invalid, then that's going to do the conditional formatting. Otherwise, it, it will just leave the formatting as is. And we'll see how that looks in a bit. OK, so here we see again, uh, if the user chooses an invalid selection, uh, it instantly gets highlighted. And you can either see it by the conditional formatting or in the check selection column. Uh, we also have an error check column over there just with a check or, or a cross. And um, all these ways are, are kind of built the same way, so we won't get into all those details. All right, another way to um, make it a little bit smoother and more robust, uh, however, using VBA, is to use the worksheet selection change event. So there's a very simple macro we can run. Uh, remember that the cell function responds to uh, Excel being calculated. So whatever is the active cell when Excel gets calculated uh, is the value that or information about that cell will be returned by the cell function. So that happens automatically when we're just typing in values or picking values from the, the list because when we added a cell, Excel just recalculates. But if we're just clicking around on the sheet, uh, we can also force that to happen. And this simple macro uh, works by on the sheet that we're using our drop-down list. Um, we set this as a worksheet selection change event, which means Every time you change your selection, so if you just click on a cell, this macro will get triggered. And then what it does is it, it checks on the cell that you've clicked on. Uh, does it have a data validation rule on there? And if it does, is it the list type rule? So it's called Excel validate list. 
which re that's what we uh, in VBA that's what we refer to a drop down list as and if it does then it just forces Excel to recalculate if there is no rule then it just exits and we do that because we don't want to have Excel recalculating many many times when it doesn't need to so it's only important when we click on a cell that has a drop down list in it all right, so here you can see the effect of that. As I click on any cell uh, up on my table, these are the cells with drop-down lists, you can notice the table in the bottom, which generates the list of items for my drop-down, will get updated. If I click on a cell that does not have a drop-down, then nothing happens there. All right, to wrap things up about this, so our example showed uh, the basic use of data validation lists, and then we made a simple uh, dependent data validation list just between two cells, and then we added in the magic of the cell function uh, so that we can basically put this uh, dependent data validation dropdowns on as many cells as we like, but we were still using just two columns. Um, but is, this can be expanded to as many columns as you need. So back to our customer's original scenario, um, we just decided to uh, add on drop down lists so they could pick the category and then the product and then the color and then the size as appropriate. So you can see here uh, that's working all the way across and this is a huge product list we're dealing with. So you can see each one of our lists is fairly long until uh, you get down further. So the, the product list was a little bit longer now the size list is shorter. And then as it finishes off, uh, it finds the brand and some price information which is coming from the product list and there's no need for us to pick those because uh, once all the other fields have been set uh, those prices are just what they are and we just look that up from the product table. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's uh, you found it interesting and found this new power, uh, not new, but um, interesting power of the cell function that's actually been there for a long time, but uh, this is a really interesting use for it. Uh, we have a detailed article with an example file that you can find at someproduct.com slash thought. Uh, just search for data validation or dependent data validation on there and you'll find our article. I have the link here on the screen. And if you have any questions about this, you can contact us at uh, steve.cranach at someproduct.com. If you have any questions about this particular topic, I'll be happy to answer those. Or if uh, we can help you with any consulting or training needs, uh, we'll be happy to hear about that as well. And happy Excel weekend.